Today we have an interesting topic for you guys. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about movement of goods and people. Now, transportation allows us to do that. <laughs> you guys realize back then, our ancestors used to walk on their feet to <laughs> food and water. <laughs> anyway, I don't know much about this, but uh, my good friend, Hiroki, is born to know everything. How about we bring him in? Transportation covers a variety of modes, mm -hmm. such as air, <laughs> rail, <laughs> road, <laughs> and water. Can you give us a little more insight about it? So which mode was first introduced in its history? Because certainly, I believe that human-powered transportation was the very first. Yeah, you're right, man. Human power, or what we call the manpower. So what do you mean by manpower? How about we take a closer look? So manpower, what this is, you use your body, mostly legs, walk on feet, bring back food on the table, simple as that. Back then we had limited access to far places since it took too much time just to get to one place and come back home. And it was dangerous when dark, no alternative methods to carry things, no nothing, not even both. So back then, did we only use ourselves as movement? No nah, man, we had that carried it for us. Let's take a look at the next picture over there. Talking about horses and oxen, we also have tools attached. We have wheels, we have sleds. This is all done to speed up the process and to move goods efficiently. Sure, it makes our lives a lot easier. And then next, I assume that uh, it says like the Roman created paved roads made of crushed stone for their armies to travel faster. How is it like? The road was uniquely designed to make the surface flat, dry, and ease of water flow. And yet, it makes traveling much faster. Did you know that the first form of water transportation was canoes made of tree trunks? And how we control it was obviously by rowing and using wind as a motion. You know what I mean? <laughs> now that's pretty interesting. They made canoes out of tree trunks? Is that even durable? Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what it was in the back of the time. Oh. What about the uh, Industrial Revolution? I heard so much about it, but uh, you better tell me more what the f*** it is all about. <laughs> okay, okay, calm down, man. I'll explain everything step by step, so don't mess with me, boy. The Industrial Revolution took place in the late 18th century and early 19th century. Now, that is a long time ago, like more than 200 years ago. It first began in England with the introduction of steam power, powering up steam engine trains, becoming a dominant source of land transportation. It must have been hard for the people back in the time to believe what they saw. Steam transporting people and goods. Because it was too expensive to ride on a train, people still relied, relied heavily on walking. But as the public transportation in the bicycle sector grew larger and larger, people's traveling distance per day gradually decreased. The change was gradual until personal vehicles came to the society in the 1900s. The balance has changed dramatically, allowing people to travel almost three destinations per day. And this convenience has reduced all the other travel methods in extreme. And uh, I believe highways were also built in the 19th century. The first highway was uh, simple aggregate stone layers with cement coating. And there were also airplanes.
Yeah man, don't forget about the airplane. There are also one of ways to get around from many different places. After World War I, airplanes became so famous they dominated transportation by moving numerous loads of goods and people at very fast speeds and far locations. I mean, wow, that's the greatest invention ever! How many times have you flown on the airplane? Yeah man, I've been on it many times. I, my first one was when I was four years old. And man, great service, great food, and you can put as much love as you can. And the best thing is that you can travel all around anywhere on the globe. But as you know, many of us heard that there are many negative impacts on these crazy inventions. That's right man. Now, let's look at the chart. Due to the rapid economical growth after World War II, vehicle ownership reached one per household. Can you believe that? One family owning one car. People also found out that there's a synergy effect in between economic growth, urbanization, and motorization. If any of the ones successfully developed, the other two must equally develop in order to maintain the societal balance. As an example, Japan in 1956, most of people purchased cars but ended up not using it since the highway system was still incomplete. Yo man, you're going off topic. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, as the population of the GDP increased, the number of vehicle ownership increased too. And you know what that means, right? That means environmental problems increased. What the hell man? The red table. What the hell guys? This is my Shut up! Come on, sit down, calm down, man. Explain everything step by step. How about we take a look at the next picture? Not just car numbers, environmental problems caused by car transport increased at the same time. By the late 1970s, the world first detected a health hazard caused by automobile emissions. As a result, in the 1990s, an uprising of environmental deterioration in developing countries has occurred. So, it's like some of the increase of the population, the economic growth, and the transportation, and the lack of infrastructure has created massive problems, massive environmental problems for the current society to face. Let's talk more after our commercial break.